Hello, everyone. Welcome to our March 31st, 2011 Forex Education class. This is a co-production between FXStreet.com and FXDD. Now, to give you a disclaimer, we do not give buy, sell, or hold recommendations. Trading is risky. You want to make sure you trade only with risk capital that will not affect your lifestyle. All right, so today, this is going to be another great one in our Forex Education series. Greg is going to be sharing with you about using Fibonacci tools in your short-term Forex trading. I think this is going to be a good one, and it should be well-received. Greg Michalowski is on the left-hand side. He's our chief. He is also the author of a new book, Attacking the Currency Trends. That's out and available at bookstores and on Amazon.com. Definitely take advantage of that. I'm Sean Powell. I'm a national trainer at FXDD. I'll be helping out in the chat window and answering questions and queuing up things for Greg. Okay, so if you're looking to open a trading account, you can do so at like fxdd.com slash fxstreet. Right there, showing. What you can do is if you want to get an account open, a real account, a live account, I can get a $100 bonus put in that account. All you need to do is email me, askpowell at fxdd.com, and let me know you've opened an account. Okay, with that being said, I'm going to pass us over to Greg. Wish him good luck, and we'll be off and running. Good luck, Greg. Uh, anyway, today's a, today's a lesson is, uh, lesson, uh, you know, less, uh, of a, a webinar is going to be on how uh, Fibonacci retracements can be used in your short-term uh, trading. And uh, my, myself, at, uh, or Sean and I at FXDD, we, we abide by certain things like our mission statement and game plan. And uh, it, it's important to understand what, what this mission statement and game plan is as it relates to Fibonacci retracements. So I'm just going to give it to you really quick, uh, and I'll show you what, what I mean. Uh, later on in the presentation, but uh, the mission statement is to make the most amount of money with the least amount of risk, and our game plan is to trade the trends and keep fear to a minimum. Now, we know that uh, trends uh, in the Forex market do not go up or down in a straight line. Prices go up, prices correct, prices go up some more, prices correct some more. Uh, and uh, so it's this up and down motion, up and down motion that tends to uh, happen in your trading in Forex market and any sort of market that you trade out there. Uh, of course, the prices do go down and they trend down and they correct and they trend down even more and they correct. So it goes up and it goes down. Uh, but you have these uh, corrections and corrections uh, to uh, us as traders can be very painful. Uh, so uh, they are um, something that you have to adjust for and be uh, aware of. And uh, what are the implications of uh, corrections? And corrections cause traders to get out of sync uh, with the rhythm of the market. There is a rhythm to the market. Um, uh, it goes up, it comes down, it goes up, it comes down. And when the market's trending, there's a really definable rhythm uh, that tends to happen, that tends to repeat itself, and I'll show you in, in a little bit. And if it doesn't, it gives you clues as well. And uh, that's uh, the essence of thing, using things like Fibonacci retracements. Now, if you're out of sync with the market, what is that going to do to your trading and to your fear? It's going to increase your fear. And fear is a trader's worst enemy. Remember, our game plan is to uh, trade trends and keep fear to a minimum. Uh, that is uh, not something that we want to um, have is fear. So we have to try to try to control it. Uh, fear makes traders do things they tend to regret later. Uh, think about uh, not only in your, in your trading but in other things in life. When you have fear, uh, it causes you to do things that um, you regret. Uh, also, traders need uh, so traders need to try to steer clear of fear. That's what I like to tell them. Uh, all traders is to try to steer clear of fear. If you can steer clear of fear, uh, you are going to be uh, better off as a trader. Uh, you won't be making those mistakes uh, like buying the highs, selling the lows. You'll be more in control of your trading. So um, now Fibonacci retracements do an important thing in your trading. They measure uh, corrections uh, and they help. Traders control your their fear. Uh, if you can control your fear, that's part of the game plan. Remember that uh, Fibonacci retracements help traders get back on trends. Remember our game plan is to trade the trends because uh, trends are where you're going to make the most amount of money with the least amount of risk. So you want to trade the trends. So they, uh, Fibonacci retracements help traders get back on the trends, uh, which uh, goes through your game plan. It also goes toward your mission statement because. Our mission statement is to, is to uh, make the most amount of money, and uh, that's where you make it, in the trends. Fibonacci retracements uh, can be used quite effectively to define risk. Uh, if you um, know where a Fibonacci retracement level is, you can use that as a level of, of uh, 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 defining your risk. If the market stays above it, 
uh, you uh, you uh, above the Fibonacci retracement, you go long, and the market continues uh, or re resumes a trend to the upside. Uh, you're 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 uh, golden. If the market goes below that Fibonacci retracement level, that uh, gives you a signal that perhaps you should uh, get out of your position. Perhaps the market is correcting further. Uh, may, maybe even uh, looking to trend the other way. Uh, so you have to be careful at those points, at those Fibonacci points. But they do define your risk. Uh, Fibonacci retracements are what I call unambiguous trading tools. Um, I already uh, sort of define that. Uh, if you have a line of Fibonacci retracement that comes in at the 38.2% retracement level, uh, if the market price is above it, uh, then that uh, defines a bullish. Uh, you want to be long if the market price goes below it. That means it's bearish. Uh, it should, go, it should continue to correct further, go down to a lower level. And so that is what I call an unambiguous trading tool. It gives you either bullish or bearish. It doesn't tell you overbought, oversold. It just tells you you should be long, you should be short. And that's important in your trading. It allows you to keep your fear to a minimum. Fibonacci retracements are also used by Forex traders in the Forex market. Um, and so they become something that you as a trader should pay attention to. If the Forex market traders are looking at it, you as a retail foreign exchange trader better get on board and understand what Fibonacci retracements are. So um, corrections um, using Fibonacci retracements, I can go into a whole thing, you know, lesson on where these Fibonacci retracement levels come from. But uh, uh, And uh, if you aren't um, uh, versed in Fibonacci retracement, send me an email at greg at fxde.com. I'll send you to some links um, that I have of uh, uh webinars that I've done in the past that'll give you a little bit more knowledge about where Fibonacci retracement levels come from. Uh, but basically, they represent a, a retracement of a trend, a trend from a low to a high or a trend from a high to a low. And the market or the, the levels that the market pays, pays attention to are primar primarily three, one 38.2, 150%. One sixty oh uh, and the third one sixty one point eight. So that should be one two fifty percent three sixty one point eight. Those are the Fibonacci retracement levels of a low to high trend or a high to low trend that you as a trader should be paying attention to for clues in uh, how to define risk in the market. So let's take a look at an, at an example, um, and uh, then uh, we're going to look at in the euro that uh, has taken the euro up from. Uh, the March 16th low up to the March 22nd high, and then saw a correction. And later on, after we go through this, these examples, we'll go and take a look at the live market now, and I can show you um, ways that you can use these uh, Fibonacci retracements, or that you know, you know, just reinforce the ways that you can use these Fibonacci retracements from what we see from these uh, historical charts, if you will. Uh, it happens every day. Uh, you can find uh, key clues from uh, Fibonacci retracements, and that you can use in your short-term trading. So here we have the euro versus U.S. dollar, and this takes the price from a low here at 138.65 up to a high of 142.47. Uh, and uh, what you notice here uh, is that if you put the Fibonacci retracement in, uh, it defines these 38.2%, 50%, and 61.8% Fibonacci retracement levels. And note here what uh, what the market does in this move to the downside. The market comes down and tests this 38.2. We find support against that level. Is the market uh, is the market def is risk defined at, at this 38.2 percent retracement? Sure, it's defined at that level. What is your risk? Well, if the market goes below the 38.2, you can expect that the market may go to the 50 percent retracement level. If it doesn't go below that level, you can expect the retracement to the upside. So, someone who is looking to get long the uh, euro on a correction of this move to the upside here of, uh, at the uh, may, may find that the uh, buying at the 38.2% retracement is a nice trade, is a nice short-term trade for, for your, your um, trading on this day, March 23rd. So what happens? You buy at that level, you risk uh, maybe uh, to this point right here, maybe the bottom of this yellow section, which is just a small amount of risk because if the market should head down toward that level, perhaps we should go, uh, the market should go lower from that level. And uh, so you buy against that level, and what do you do? You get the retracement up, which takes the price around from 141.01 up to around the 141. 60 level, not a bad short-term trade for you as a trader in the in the market. Uh, a counter trend or a counter of, of this trend, but part of this trend, but bigger up uptrend here. So it becomes a, 
a low risk trading opportunity when the market moves back down. Um, and we could, you know, I could talk about why it went back down. A, hey, it went below this 100 hour moving average, but we won't get, really get into the details of that. But when it came down again, it gave you another buying opportunity and the market moved up. This time, it didn't, didn't do what it did the last time. So on this trade right here, we had the opportunity to buy against 38.2. What happens? The market fails to reach a target like this um, 100 hour moving average and it reverses and this time the market starts to move below that 38.2 and it turns the bias more to the downside. We get the correction up above the 38.2 but it can't sustain momentum above there and we start coming down and where do we go down to? Our next level of support, the 50% retracement level. Uh, dip a little bit below that level, uh, but quickly rebound above and start its move to the upside. So this is a short-term short trading opportunity. This is a short-term trading opportunity. Buying against the retracement levels, getting back on on the trend. And although, although uh, you know, this obviously is a bigger move to the upside, and you can see here, once it gets back above the 38.2, it gives you this opportunity to buy here and take advantage of this type of move. But these are uh, levels that you as a trader should be paying attention to, should be following, should be using to define your risk to allow you to get on the market, uh, get back in, in trend type situation, allow you to profit even on an intraday basis by using a Fibonacci retracement on a longer term, you know, a more longer term chart like the hourly chart and looking at more of data here gives you nice clear signals in your trading. Now let's take a look a little uh, uh, and, and dissect uh, more shorter term periods here like this period right here where the market moves up, uh, trends to the upside and has a corrective move to the downside similar to this trend to the upside, corrective move to the downside. So our next chart takes a look at that period, that yellow period and starts to and looks at the move up, uh, the original move up. Now the original move takes price from one to two on the top side. Um, so, um, you know, that's a pretty good move, you know, close to 200 uh, pips to the upside here. Uh, the, the move has a, a number of green bars uh, indicating a, a strong bullish bias. That's the, that's the trend. Uh, so you as a trader may uh, find some reason, and we won't go into that, that reason right now, where you think perhaps it's an opportunity to sell at this level, um, you know, and it may just be uh, like a trend line here. It may be a, a moving average on a shorter term chart. Whatever the reason, um, it may be uh, old, older data going back off the screen uh, this way uh, that says this is resistance lever. Whatever the reason, what you're what you're going to be looking for as a trader is the Fibonacci retracement levels and paying attention to what, in particular, the 38.2 percent retracement level says to you says to the market um, because what happens in a trending market a trending market that is that is sustained that is sustainable is you have winners and losers in the market and the winners are the ones who take advantage of buying opportunities let's say against this moving average and move the price up to a high uh, that finds resistance and then then corrects down the winners are the ones who are long here and get out at the high or when the market starts to peak and starts to come down. The winners are also the ones who buy on the dips against these levels. Now the losers, the guys, the guys who aren't doing well, who are buying um, uh, at the high here um, or, buy, or, or selling in this rally to the upside uh, and are short, uh, they're the ones who are praying at this point that I hope the market moves down. And they also, uh, you know, they may be caught short you know, they, maybe they think that, uh, you know, they have a fundamental trade on that the euro is going down because of Portugal or this or that or another. And uh, they know that, you know, they, they um, don't pay attention to what the chart is telling them, but instead paying attention to what uh, maybe the uh, commentators on CNBC or Bloomberg are telling them. So they get short in the market. And then when they see the market start to correct, they're feeling, oh, uh, you know, they have the hope trade. I hope the market goes down further. I hope it goes through the 38.2% retracement. Now, the smart traders, the ones who are in control of the market, will, will know where this level is, and they'll be ready to support at uh, support the market at this level. The people who are short the market in this bull market will be hoping that that they can't control the 38.2, that the market breaks and starts to move back to the downside, uh, like their uh, fundamentals tell them it should. Um, but in, but in, uh, and if the market holds a 38.2, what happens to those traders who are are short in this market? They get more fearful. They have more more uh, anxiety, 
and they are forced to cover their position. And it's a combination of new longs getting in on the retracement and shorts squee getting squeezed uh, that forces the market to the legs to the upside. So you, as a trader, have the ability, even if you're not in a trade uh, and you don't take advantage of this move to the upside, to take advantage of the corrective moves and the ability to hold things like the 38.2% retracement. If you're able to, if the market is able to hold the 38.2% retracement on a nice trend move, on a correction, this is a pretty good um, indi indication uh, that the market is, the longs are still in charge, that there possibly are some shorts out there that still are squeezed uh, and uh, or could get squeezed. So we're not guaranteed anything. But what we know is that you can, if you can define your risk here, and if the level holds, you have the, um, you probably have at least good trade, a uh, good trade location that either you're going to risk a little. If the market goes below this line, maybe comes down to this area, you're going to get out where the moving average is, where the 50% uh, retracement is. Uh, if the market moves below, you're going to get out. But if the market holds that level, you could p participate in the next leg to the upside. So this chart. It's just like that longer term chart, 38.2, correct, 38.2, move up. This isn't a profit opportunity. This is a profit opportunity. Take advantage of it. Now, let's uh, let's uh, move on to the same chart. And in this case, I'm going to take a look at this move to the upside here. And re remember, trends are made up of trends, corrections, trends, corrections, trends, corrections, trends. Uh, and eventually, they, those trends end. But let's so, so let's break this down and take a look at this section right now. And if you take a look at that move to the upside, we move from 139.70 to the dip. And where do we go? We go down below the 100 bar moving average uh, for the first time since this point right here. That gives you an opportunity to uh, sell uh, the market. And uh, it does, and the market goes and tests the 38.2. And you can see that the momentum takes the price below that line. We go from 140.45 to 140.40. Hey, a whole five pips below that line where we were going to be running into additional support against 200 bar moving average. So this is um, a, a support level. But what is important here to note is that the market breaks 38.2 but cannot sustain that selling. You should see further selling. It can't. In fact, look where the bar ends up. It, it has a nice tail here, and it ends up here. So as, as on the failure of here, traders immediately come in and they say, all right, I'm going to see, I'm going to buy the market. Now, they may not buy it until it gets above this level right here, but they know that this level's here, they know that this level's here, and then the market moves higher. On the next move to the downside, what do we do? We find the same support against this level. Now, in our two examples here, we've seen the price come to 38.2, move higher, come to 38.2, and then move higher. Does it always happen that way? Get the one move, two moves, and then the move to the upside? No. But uh, each of these levels provides you with the same trading decision, folks. We had a nice bull run here. We have a corrective move to 38.2, a move higher that fails up at the highs here. And so you expect that to come down. But when the market, mark, when you have another opportunity here at this point uh, to uh, enter the market, you have to be ready to take advantage of it. Why? Because you can define your risk. Your risk is through this line right here. That's not a lot of risk. And what's your potential reward? You don't know at this point, but what you do know is if 38.2 holds, you have the opportunity uh, to take advantage of a move to the upside. Your risk is defined. Your risk is limited. You have the potential for a move to the upside. That's what you as a trader have to do. And again, it is it, it, this is a, a move within a move of what we saw in the uh, long-term picture. This move to the upside, uh, we take, take it into pieces and trends are made of pieces, and as long as that 38.2% retracement level can hold, uh, like it did here, like it did here, um, or, you know, it failed here and moved up, uh, it held here and moved up, you are in control, the longs are still in control, take advantage of it. That's what you have to do as a trader. So let's uh, move on to the same chart here and uh, take a look at the, another level. This was the last level we looked at. Let's take a look at this move to the upside. And this, as you can see on the hourly chart, is much more powerful move to the upside. So let's take a look at that more closely. And from this uh, 
chart. It doesn't look like it uh, went top. Just believe me, um, uh, it, it does happen. It does give you clues. Now, the market moves higher, and what do we correct to? We correct down to 38.2% retracement. And in this case, the market finds them have the risk. Uh, the risk is defined. Uh, it's a 38.2% retracement. We know from a long-term perspective, we're in a move to the upside. Uh, we're looking for the uh, for a final uh, a leg to the upside. A nice buying opportunity again. In this case, the market moves from 141.35 uh, up to the high of 142.46, uh, uh, where we where we show signs of topping uh, in this uh, uh, currency pair. So there, uh, we took the market um, along uh, the different ways here. Uh, and found uh, found uh, the high uh, that took us up to our. We're at a high here in the euro versus U.S. dollar, and I want to focus um, uh, on all right uh, the the correction to the other way. We saw the market trend one, two, three nice legs to the upside that we uh, took advantage of three or four, I guess. And we, we we looked at this leg, we looked at this leg, we looked at this leg, uh, and finally we get to the high price here where the market finds a top. Now, oh, obviously we have uh, uh, signs here. Of the market topping, why we have a number of different highs here. We have a trend line. So here is a trade, and we've gone a long way. You know, we've gone from 138.50 oh, to 142.50 in a matter of one, day, two, two and a half days uh, to the upside. So or three days, three and a half days to the upside. That's a pretty good move in a day. So you, as a trader, are looking for uh, some reasons to think that the market may correct. And uh, if you, if it does uh, correct, what you, as a trader, want to do is uh, start to put your Fibonacci's in. The other way, that it, uh, or you know, from a long-term perspective, the other way. In this case, we're looking for a retracement back to the downside uh, of of a longer-term term trend, and we go and we know we put in our, our Fibonacci retrace. The market comes down 38.2 percent retracement, moves up from there, comes down again, tests 38.2, moves up. And note here, when the market moves below uh, the 38.2 and the 100-hour moving average here, the market then uh, corrects further to the downside. Uh, here, uh, finding support against 50%. These Fibonacci retracement levels are very uh, key uh, tools uh, for your trading. Now, in, in that pre prior chart, note here that I started my Fibonacci from this midpoint right here, Why did, or, or from this point that's not really off the lows. Why would I have the Fibonacci all the way down here? You can imagine the 38.2 would maybe be down at this area right here. Now, we eventually get there, but going from here to here, is a pretty good uh, leap, leap, especially in a strong bull market. So what I will do as a as a, a rule or as a you know kind of a way that I finesse the, uh, the Fibonacci's is I'll put a more realistic Fibonacci retracement level in. And in this case, I come down to this low right here. Why? Well, because it's it corresponds with our trend line here. This trend line is what. Um, is giving us the clues uh, to the top here. And you can see when the market breaks here, we, we see the sharp move to the downside. The trend line had some significance, as did this, uh, you know, four or this, you know, double or triple top up here at the highs. So I put the Fibonacci from this midpoint to here because I want to measure something that's realistic, something that I could, um, that um, I could, uh, grab onto because I'm not really sure that the trend is over here. It may come down to 38.2 and then take off to the upside again. I'm pretty confident that I'm going to get a correction because we have this triple top. We have the break of the moving average here. But I want to give something a realistic target here. And if I put the Fibonacci here, you can also notice here that we do have these highs and these lows here. So I have a, a couple reasons, you know, some people call them uh, that, that uh, or they call that uh, confluence, where you have um, other reasons to, um, or a couple reasons why a level is, is key. And in this case, this, this high, this, or this uh, high, this low, this low, um, this 38.2, it all, it makes this level an important level. And note here that even the 100-hour 100, 100 moving average gets in play, and that's why we see the further move to the downside here, a key level for the euro versus U.S. dollar. So when the market is moving down and correcting down here, I'm kind of an anxious buyer at this point. Why? Because we have all this good support here, and lo and behold, the market does correct. Um, it only corrects a little, so this, this trade is not going to make me a lot. This trade may make me, uh, you know, makes me a little bit more on the corrective move uh, here to the top side. But again, these are shorter term trading opportunities that um, you can define your risk, you can keep your risk to a minimum, and potentially make a nice uh, a gain in your uh, moves and see where it can go. So um, 
Now, that's just a lesson there. But once the market breaks that 38.2% retracement, then I can go to the next chart and kind of see, okay, see where, what if I put the Fibonacci and it bounces, it comes down to the 38.2 and it bounces. Are those short-term trading opportunities? You bet they are. They provide you the opportunity to get in the market on that 38.2% retracement, allow you to profit from the, from the trade, and uh, not only once but twice, and then eventually when the market moves through that level, again, we go to the 50% retracement. We actually looked at this example earlier today. Uh, so now I, um, I wanted to uh, go and take a look at uh, some of the, uh, uh, the real market here. I'm going to take my camera off here and put it back on um, our charts. Uh, in, in the current market, I think I will start start with the um, euro uh, versus U.S. dollar. And and uh, in, in our last sequence, we were ba basically focused on the hourly chart. And um, so you, as a shorter term trader, hey, you could use an hourly chart and find short term trading opportunities um, without looking at a five minute chart, without looking at a fifteen minute chart. You're looking at an at an hourly chart, and that gives you um, <coughs> that can give you uh, shorter term trading clues as well. Um, uh, so uh, let's uh, take a look at a five-minute chart and see if that uh, if some uh, clues come out uh, from that five-minute chart as well. Uh, when, oh, first, let me see. Look, I get a question here. When you consider that the trend is over, according fib levels you use, um, well, uh, so before we get into the five-minute chart, I'm getting a question here. I guess you can all, all see it. When when uh, when do you consider that the trend is over? Uh, uh, Using the fib, fib levels that you use, um, the trend the trend is over if um, if it if it starts to break um, key uh, technical levels now, um, including the Fibonacci retracements. But there are other tools that I use uh, in my trading, including moving averages um, and trend lines. Those are the three tools that I use. They're very simple trading tools. Uh, so. When, when uh, in in our example, uh, the euro versus U.S. dollar on an um, hourly basis, when the market was uh, moving uh, higher uh, during this uh, trend type period, uh, we had the trend line coming in. So um, that is um, an indication that the, the trend is over when it breaks through the trend line. Now the Fibonacci retracements. Um, what you want to do is is look at the the uh, retracement levels, 38.2. I know this is. Uh, this uh, chart has a lot of stuff on it here. Uh, let me get rid of this uh, line, this Fibonacci right here. Um, the uh, 38.2, when it breaks through that 38.2, that says that the, the, the counter trend or the corrective trend isn't over. That's that you start to target the 50% retracement or the 200-hour 200, um, 200 moving average or the parallel trend line. All these reasons become uh, targets on the downside. So that's... Um, that's um, uh, that that's that's why when when this counter corrective trend is over uh, at this point right here, and then you start to look for the moves. You, you never know. You as a trader, especially in these markets, folks, um, in these markets that we have right now, you can have trends up, pretty good trends down, trends up, trends down, trends up. I mean, it can go anywhere depending upon what you're focused on uh, and. So what you have to do from a fundamental perspective, okay, um, if, if you want to focus on Greece and um, Ireland and the Ireland bank stress test or if you want to focus on stronger growth or uh, ECB tightening rates or inflation or whatever, you can, you can say that the euro is going higher or the euro is going lower or the dollar is going lower or the dollar is going higher. Uh, but, but from my perspective, um, I want to focus on the technicals. Why? Because the technicals are going to tell you where the market is going. It's going to tell you that the market is above uh, the moving average line and it's going to go higher or that we're finding a top up here against these uh, highs right here. Uh, it's going to tell you those those clues. It's going to tell you that where the retracement is and, uh, and move from there. So that's what I – I hope that answered your question. But um, uh, uh, So let's uh, get in um, – Let's get into the uh, uh, five-minute chart here, and I'll, and I'll you know, show you, you know, what's happened over the last, I guess, few days here. But note here that the market moves up pretty sharply here to the upside here. Uh, uh, yes, this is uh, yesterday's uh, trade. Um, this is unsustainable. This pace is unsustainable. We had this. Uh, we, we were having a very choppy session here yesterday, but the um, 
but but the market gave you some clues. The market gave you some clues at this point right here. Well, the market moved to the upside here, uh, found some sellers, and then came down, and we we uh, stalled here at the 38.2% retracement. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit more uh, to show show you here. Note here that the initially the market fell below the moving average, came to 38.2% retracement, moved up to the 100 bar moving average. This should be a clue that the market has potential to move back down, and we are seeing this choppy trade trading in yesterday's trade. You can see up, down, up, down, so on and so forth. So the market comes up here, breaks below the 100, comes to the 38.2, corrects to the 100, and then breaks below the 38.2. What would you expect as a trader, up or down, at this point right here where it's breaking through the 38.2? For me, I would say down. It's going down because we broke through the 38.2. We broke through the 100. This market, this market's been choppy. Uh, it should go down. What exactly happens? No, nope, the market doesn't go down. In fact, we move back above it. And the next bar, the five-minute bar, we're breaking above the 100 bar moving average and moving higher. This clue right here, this failure here, even though it failed and you may have shorted the market at this point right here, this point right here, you got to get out. You have to get out when it moves back above here. That's just, you know, that's just the odds are, are against you at that point. You got to think higher. If you're lucky enough and you didn't do this short here, here at this point, and you're not worried about getting out, you're got, you got to be thinking about getting long at this point. You have to think that we're in store. We, we've got the potential to move higher. And <clears throat> what is the risk on the trade? Every trade has risk. You should define your risk. If you can define your risk, then you can decrease your fear. And so the risk on this trade is if the price goes below this line. If it goes back below this line, if this move to the upside here above the 100 bar moving average fails and it goes back below the 38.2% retracement, you're out. You have a small loss. All right? That's trading. That's what happens. That's what, that's what you have to accept as a trader is that that's the possibility. Now, what's the possible gain? Well, the possible gain is that hmm, the market breaks out of its funk and uh, of this up and down funk and starts to move higher. It's not an easy move higher. We come up to this level; it, it holds resistance. But hey, we get another clue here. The market holds a 200 bar moving average here, and it starts to move higher. The market see, price players see this. The next thing you know, you start to get this move to the upside. This wasn't off of any news. It was just uh, the market squeezing to the upside. Uh, and taking the traders out uh, on on that move to the upside, and there you get you, you get lucky, uh, and you make your make your uh, you have your short term trading opportunity, take advantage of it, and you make your money. Now I said the word lucky here, um, and uh, what I mean by lucky is uh, there are two types of luck. One is blind luck, okay, the luck that um, that uh, I'm going to bet red or I'm going to bet black, and uh, hope hopefully it'll come up uh, and I'll make the money. And then there's uh, the the uh, the, uh, where traders make their own luck or where, tra where people make their own luck. And you make your own luck by recognizing this, by being aware that the 38.2 in, in an unsustainable trend, if that level holds and that level starts to move away from it, those shorts, those new longs are going to recognize this and they're going to be forced to squeeze, they're going to squeeze themselves um, and the new longs are going to come in and push the market higher and squeeze those shorts and the market's going to move higher. And so you you uh, you make your own luck. Uh, good traders make their own luck. Always remember that, folks. Good traders make their own luck. So what's another technique I use? So we have this unsustainable move to the upside here, and we have an even more unsustainable move to the upside here. So let's uh, let's uh, take a look at when the market peaks here. And I'm going to move the Fibonacci up to this uh, point right here, for where the market based and it moved to the upside. This is something that I do as well. I don't necessarily again like the other hourly chart where I went not sort of in the middle of the range. What I want to see in the market is this. The market squeezes to the upside and I want to see how short the market is. That is, are there more shorts out that are going to get concerned at the 38.2? And you can see here that we come down to 38.2 and we move up. Do we move up a lot? Do we head up to new highs? No. So the market rotates back down and comes down to where, where we actually have resistance against this level right here and starts to use that level as a support level here. We hold that floor right there for the longest time uh, through the time here, and then we start to break back above the 38.2. So uh, um, in, in this instance where the market starts going really sideways for a long time here, and we do move a little below the 38.2% retracement, 
it doesn't give you that that great a trading opportunity um, during this level. But but what you as a trader have to recognize is that um, is that um, the longer the market non trends here, and if the market can get its feet back under it itself and continue the trend that we we saw start here, you can't ignore that. You have to start getting uh, thinking about getting back into the market. And if you did by taking clues above the 38.2, the inability to break lower here, especially after we break this floor here, uh, and the move back above the 38.2, note here that we come up here and we use this as a springboard and get a nice move to the upside here. This is giving you clues that there's support in the market and the shorts are likely to get squeezed again in the direction uh, of, of the upside. So it gives you uh, that opportunity uh, once, once again uh, to uh, enter the market uh, to profit from that uh, uh, potential uh, potential move. So uh, let's uh, let's uh, uh, take let's take these um, things out of here. Um, hold on one second. All right. So um, now uh, let's um, let's put a Fibonacci here against the uh, low low here. We see the move to the upside. We see the uh, extension to the up, upside here, uh, and uh, and we and we find a uh, top here in the in the market. Uh, that uh, where where the market definitely is showing some top signs of topping. Um, I, if I go to my hourly chart again, uh, this move to the upside here, this uh, trend to the upside is running into some resistance levels here uh, against old. Uh, the, the, the last time we were at the, at this level, uh, you can see that we had a high here. The market came down. We came up to this level and moved down. We had some other highs and lows in this whole area. So this level is is what I consider a key key um, key area, a level where there's some Remembered prices, some prices where the market did find some uh, stalling of activity above uh, above this, these levels. So the market did the same thing here. It started to stall and started uh, to come down. So going back to my five-minute chart, um, if we start to measure uh, the corrective moves, um, one of the one of the corrective moves would be from this low right here. And the market, um, in this case, uh, the market moves to the upside here, and we start to correct. And where's our 38.2? It happens to co coordinate with the 100, uh, 100 bar moving errors in the five-minute chart. So this is one of those points where you have confluence in the market, where the market um, uh, has two levels of uh, support um, and and uh, uh, of support that should hold. And y you can see here how the market came down today to the 141.92 level. This level is at 88, uh, 87 and a half. So 92 and 87, you're going to get those early buyers against that level and the market moves higher. When the market breaks through this level, however, this area now becomes our resistance area. Um, and uh, uh, this low right here and the 100 bar moving areas and the market breaks through that level and starts its move to the downside. We find support against 200 bar moving areas and move to the upside. Now, interestingly enough as well, uh, when, uh, the low that we had here today, uh, if you uh, uh, put the Fibonacci all the way down to our new low here to the high, uh, the market came down to the 38.2% retracement level right next to the 200 bar moving average as well. Uh, so our risk, again, from a short-term trading perspective um, is th this area right here. If the market should break below the 200 bar moving average, we should see lower prices uh, if it holds that level. You should see higher prices, and that's exactly what we saw. We saw the market start to correct back to the upside off of the 38.2, off of uh, another uh, the moving average as well. This is, by the way, the 200 simple moving average. This is 100 simple moving average, um, and, uh, and and that's what we saw the market move to the upside. Is that a short-term trading opportunity? Yes. Is risk defined? Yes. Use the Fibonacci retracements to define your risk. Watch the 38.2% retracements of trending type moves and look for the opportunities to lean against those levels to get good trade location to perhaps get back on the trend. The trend is your friend. The trend is fast. The trend is directional. If your, if your trade ends up, uh, uh, not working out. That is, if we move below support, and if you have double, re you know, a confluence uh, situation where you have a couple reasons why you think a level should uh, hold. If it doesn't hold, get out. But you're risking a little, potentially make more than a little. Would you risk this amount to make the potential of this amount? Figure out how many, how many of half of these squares. Let's take half of this square right here and figure out one, two, three squares. So you're taking a half 
to make the potential potentially, you know, two, maybe two or maybe three times more of what you risk on a trade. That's what that's uh, how you have your account balance move in your direction. So where do we go from here? Well, we hold in the 200 bar moving average. You hold the 38.2. We have to get back through the 100 bar moving average. If we get back through the 100 bar moving average, you can probably think that the market players may think that this this uh, corrective move to the down, downside may lead to another leg to the upside. That What is your risk? The risk, well, well, once you get through the 100 bar moving average, you have to get through this level right here, This these highs right here. And note here that we came up to get back up to our remembered line here. We get through that level, now we have the high for the day. It's just a matter of moving up, moving up, moving up. And if the market squeezes above the 42.32 level, um, then you have a good potential for further gains. Would I do anything at this point right here? No. The, the opportunity was, was against here. This is a nice opportunity. This was another opportunity if you want to risk this amount right here. That's another opportunity at this point right here. Um, the, the trade might be uh, look for momentum above 141.96, look for a move through here, through here, and get through here. That, that would be the target. But um, uh, this really was more uh, the trade to get back on the trend uh, for today's uh, today's trading. Dollar versus yen, we'll take a look at that. Um, on the uh, five-minute chart here, this is going back to, oh, we can go back, I don't know, we can look at the, um, uh, I have a couple of things in here, I guess. Uh, this this move to the upside here, we 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 were we were non-trending in a in a period here. The market moved up, came down 38.2, uh, moved uh, moved to, uh, back to the upside here um, uh, on the uh, corrective uh, corrective move. Let me, let me uh, move this up here. Toot, toot, toot. Uh, what we what we want to see uh, is if the market trends and then breaks another level, that the next 38.2% uh, 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 holds. Um, and in this case, what we see here is the market comes down at 38.2, provides some support against there, moves up, can't get through the top, comes down again, can't get through the top, can't get through the top, breaks through the 38.2, the 50%. Uh, at this point, the 100 bar moving average and the 50% are right at that level. So we're, we're unsure. You know, we, we didn't have the 38.2, um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, but uh, we didn't have the 38.2% uh, uh, or we went through the 38.2% retracement. Uh, but it did, uh, it held a 50% in the 100 bar moving average. So the next time it goes through, uh, we need to get through these highs, and we do, and then the market starts to trend to the upside. Uh, I need to learn where to place Fibonacci's. Well, you place the Fibonacci's um, at lows, uh, low levels, and to um, high levels. Um, if you have a, a trend uh, that's moving, that's on, on uh, that's uh, in a, in a directional uh, move, uh, either from from the low to the high or the high to the low. Uh, place a Fibonacci retracement. We're trying to we're trying to figure out in the market where these uh, where the retracements markets go up and they correct. They go up, they correct. They go up, they correct. They go up, they correct. They don't go up in a straight line. What you as a trader have to re realize is that those corrective moves um, are part of the market. So you as a trader have to find a way to measure those corrective moves. If you can measure those corrective moves. Um, you are in better position to take advantage of them, to take advantage of buying opportunities in an upward sloping trend, trend um, on a shorter term basis. So it becomes a tool for you to use to define uh, where uh, you can buy the market and, uh, and, and anticipate um, uh, or use that level as a, uh, a level to lean against in order to uh, either buy the market or sell the market for a move to the upside. So. Um, you, you always, um, when you when you have a move to the upside and a corrective move to the downside, what you're looking for is to place your Fibonacci's um, uh, at at the um, most recent low uh, or or at levels that make uh, sense to you. This move to the upside is a move that can't be sustained forever. The market starts to consolidate and starts to come down. We find the 38.2. Uh, percent retracement line, and we start to uh, look at that. You have to be ahead of the game to trade successfully. Uh, and when you when you when when you know those levels, where where did I go? I lost myself in my chart, my own chart here. Um, right here. Um, when you when you see this move to the upside, it's unsustainable, and you see a corrective move to the downside. If you're prepared. If you start to use the Fibonacci retracement, so you can find the levels like 38.2, and if that level holds, that gives you a clue. The trend is likely to continue. 
What's your risk? The market breaks through that line. Uh, but 38.2 is a key, key resistance uh, or support level, especially in a trending market to the upside. Now, I want to take some questions, so I'm going to end it, uh, end it there. Um, uh, and we have about, oh, I don't know, five or six minutes. Um, so, uh, Sean, if you have any questions uh, you want to rifle off to me, hopefully I'll be able to answer them, uh, and uh, we'll go from there. Hold on. I'll give you the mic, Sean. Sure. Thanks, Greg. There's been a couple questions here on your book, maybe – you know, not to plug it or anything, but it is a good book. I've already looked through it. Maybe you can talk about that just for a second. The uh, uh, the website, um, and uh, uh, I assume that you can hear me now. But uh, if you go to that website, you can order my book. Um, it talks about uh, the it goes the book goes uh, e everywhere from uh, defining a trader's mission statement. We learned about that here today. The goal, uh, the game plan. And again, these are more details. It goes through rules for trading. It goes through other. Um, uh, things that uh, you as a trader can take advantage of it. That's what I call the foundation of trading. And then we go through uh, the tools that I use, uh, like uh, moving averages, Fibonacci retracements, uh, trend lines, so on and so forth um, uh, in, in your trading. And it kind of builds from a base uh, all the way up to the, um, uh, to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, you know, where you're, where you're trading, what tools you use, how to use them, uh, how to use uh, things like these Fibonacci retracements in your short-term trading. So if they're, it's a, it's a, it's a book for retail traders, I think, but I think all types of traders can benefit from it. Any other questions, Sean? Coming in, Greg, on trend lines. I don't know if that's something you want to talk about right now. And then also just to mention that we are doing two more webinars today at fxdd.com. You can actually go right through at uh, fxdd.com slash live. Greg, maybe you can explain how you lay a trend line just to uh, help out our friend here that uh, is asking the question. Okay. On the um, MetaTrader Meta uh, platform, I'm going to turn put my uh, screen back on here uh, to, you know, I'm, I'm constantly looking to put trend lines in all my uh, charts. And uh, you'll notice here that I have these horizontal lines uh, in, in, the, uh, in, in my charts. These are at levels uh, that I consider to be important levels that I call remembered lines. And uh, horizontal, horizontal lines are non-sloping trend lines, folks. They are very important uh, in your trading. The market sees them. The market remembers them. Um, it, it's, um, it's a place that the market's been before, that the market found uh, sellers, that the market found buyers. For instance, at, the, the, at these highs right here, if I were to look at this area closely here where the market is finding a top, uh, I, could, I can define certain areas. I can define this low right here. Market bounce made new highs, broke through that low, and then corrected up to that level right there. This becomes an important level, a level that uh, I can trade again. So I, I'm, I'm constantly putting in uh, horizontal lines, and you do that by clicking on this line here and put, uh, putting a line across, across, just clicking it into the chart. So that's one, one type of uh, trend line. You can see that this line here is another another level that's important, and this level is another level important. So in this consolidation area, this level becomes a key key level. It gets supported at this point right here when the market sells sells off, comes up to our midline here, comes up to this line, comes up to that line, comes up to that line. These lines were all in there, by the way, and have had them in for a while. When the market comes comes up through here today, we stop at that line, we break through that line, can't get through that, use that line, break above it and fail, start coming through. And note here that the, the corrective move to the upside, where do we stop? Right in the middle of our area here. So these are these are what I call remembered lines. Those are lines that um, uh, that the market remembers, and you should too. Uh, uh, other trend lines are downward sloping or upward sloping trend lines. I try to uh, look for a connecting line, connecting points. Sometimes I'll 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 forgo this line, this move to the upside here, as a uh, kind of stops being hit, the market moving up and quickly rejecting it, and I'll have a more uh, uh, I'll, I'll fit, a, fit a line, if you will, at this point uh, off of these highs right here, and that, that becomes the basis for other channels. Um, the the uh, Forex market likes to use channels. Uh, and then uh, when the market breaks through this uh, trend line up, up through the channel, it starts to use that as support. So that's how I do it. So, um, all right. Um, let me see here. Um, do, 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 uh, all right, why don't we wrap it up there. If there's no other questions, just uh, let me know. Um, uh, or uh, if there's no other questions, I'll, I'll wrap it up. If there are any other questions, it's your last chance to get it in. Uh, but I want to thank the people at FX Street for providing me with this opportunity to uh, educate you a little bit in, in 
uh, the use of Fibonacci retracements and how you can use them in your short-term uh, trading um, to better define um, your risk and also to uh, provide uh, low-risk uh, uh, trading opportunities and allow you to take advantage of um, getting back on the trends or uh, uh, finding even uh, short-term moves in the market for your short-term trading. So, anyway, that's it. I have to go. Um, I, um, I appreciate uh, everyone's uh, support here today. Um, and um, thanks again to the people at FX Street for letting, letting this uh, happen. Uh, you're a great service to the uh, retail and maybe the institutional trading community as well. And um, you're, 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 you're a, a, a credit to all traders out there who trade the foreign exchange. Thank you very much, people.